What's good everybody? Chris here, Chris Goes Outdoors. We're coming back at you again. We're indoors, which means a review of course. And what we have today, none other than the ever, ever popular Osprey Exos 58 backpack. See this pack on the trail all the time. This has been my go-to for approximately the last six months or so. Taking it out all summer long, multiple backpacking trips, multiple day hikes. Really wanted to put it through the ringer, see what all the fuss was about. Some good things about the pack, some things I was so-so about, and some things I just genuinely disliked about the pack. And we're gonna go over that in full detail right about now. All right, and here we have the pack set in front of us. I put a pillow inside it just to kind of make it retain its shape. You can see here uh, the pack itself. Comes with a brain on top. It's got a nice mesh outer pocket. The pack itself, this one is a medium. It is two pounds, 10 ounces with the brain on. The brain is detachable and that's how I used it. I only used the brain a couple times. Ended up not needing it. It is detachable. You can take it off fully from the backpack. And the pack weight then was about two pounds, four ounces. And it comes with this nice little lid to cover up the top of the pack, which is kind of cool. Nice little feature there for you. What I like most about the pack, of course, it's a it's right on the border of being ultralight. Uh, many would consider it ultralight, in fact. At two pounds, 10 ounces with the brain, 2.4 ounces without the brain. It's a very lightweight pack, and it's got a frame in it, which is always nice. Helps shift that weight right down to the waist belt. 58 liter bag here so you're not going to be hurting uh hurting for room you can store a ton of stuff in this the bottom of the pack down here you can see is a different type of material it is a reinforced material it is a thicker material than the rest of the bag really helps when it comes to abrasion resistance and things of that nature down the bottom you can see i use this all summer long there's essentially not a scratch on it so it's, uh, it's doing the job, definitely. Another thing I like is the very simplistic construction of this backpack. It is a top loading backpack, straight up. So you would load everything in through this part right here. Of course, I got a pillow in there. There is a little compression strap here too. You can latch there, tighten everything down. Simple pull cord to tighten everything back up. You have this part right here, which connects the mesh part of the pack, the little outer mesh pocket here to the pack itself. Compression straps run down each side. They are very thin, but they get the job done. The mesh is great, works exceptionally well for holding things that you need quick access or if something's wet and you wanna keep it out of the pack away from your other stuff. Simple pockets over here, mesh pockets. Got a ice axe a loop right here and you have also on the bottom space right here so you could hold for instance a sleeping pad a tent whatever else you wanted down here a great overall simplistic design i also enjoy the construction of the pack in the entirety that i had it this pack did not see a hole at all with the exception of a few right here in the mesh on the outer pocket which I cannot fault the manufacturer at all. It, it was 100% my fault. I had to do some serious bushwhacking between trees during a, a little incident with ice coming down a mountain and yeah, got torn up. I should have covered the pack and I didn't. So my fault on that one. The mesh pocket itself, besides the holes that I put into it, again, is very, it's, it's awesome. You got plenty of room, plenty of room to store stuff in here. You can store stuff that you need quick access to as well as stuff that you, you know, might have wet and you want it to dry out in the sun during the day. Keep stuff away from the nice stuff inside of your bag. The side pockets on this bag are also outstanding. You can see here, they are pretty large. So they are very large. You can compress it with the compression strap on the outside if you want. And they also have a dual access entry so you can get in from up here you can also get in from the side over here. So if you wanna take a water bottle and put it in this way, you can do that. So it's almost like a almost like a gun holster for your water. You can get it on the go, no problem. No need to take the pack off. Excellent. Love, love the side mesh pockets on this bag. The over the top enclosure, which I showed earlier right here, is a nice 
feature for those that aren't using the brain. It just gives a little bit of added cover to the pack. It is not removable, this part right here, so it is always on there, which is kind of a bummer. It would be nice if it was removable as well, but it's not really a huge downside either way. The brain is completely removable from the pack. Very easy, it just connects on three little spots with a string and a little clip. It works surprisingly well, holds in place very well as well. So you can see here, we have the straps. Load lifters here as well. The load lifters and straps, I did not particularly have a problem uh, as far as adjustment goes with these. They work as intended. Never had an issue with them sliding. Worked very well. They are a little thinner than some people may like. I did not particularly have an issue with this part down here. But all in all, the straps, load lifters, and the adjustment straps work pretty well, work as intended. The chest strap down here, once you have it all set and good to go, things good to go, it does not move. You can adjust it to your particular chest height, relatively anyway. There are three spots down here, and you can pop this out and slide it down one, two, or three on both sides to keep it nice and level and right at the particular chest level that you enjoy. I also enjoy this right here. This is Osprey's little on the go, stow and go, whatever they call it. Works, uh, works pretty well. I used it quite frequently when uh, recording my videos. I would always keep my, uh, my camera and pole right through here. So it would slide through here. You can tension it right here. It would hook onto this right here. So it would keep it from flopping around. Worked very, very well for what it is and what it was intended to do. So we're gonna go into some of the things that I thought were just kind of okay. And we'll take a look at that now. As you can see here, the pack does have hip belt pockets. And if I'm being honest, they're okay at best. They hold your stuff okay, I suppose. And you can see here, I have an iPhone 6S. Uh, you, it's hard to get this thing in here. I, you'd be lucky if you could. And it's especially bad when the pack is tightened on your hips. You lose a lot of space in these. So they're only really good for holding very small objects. Uh, I use them to hold some GoPro batteries, uh, my map for the weekend, you know, stuff like that. Just small things that you could fit in there. So yeah, the hip pockets, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not, not very fond of it all. So on top of the hip pockets being small, another issue I had was with these shoulder straps and shoulder pockets. The issue I had particularly with the shoulder pockets is that they are also extremely small. It is a good thought, it's nice that they have them there, and they can be used for, you know, certain things. Could work out for you, it may not work out for you. I just found myself keeping very small things in there. Typically I'd keep sunscreen in one, sunglasses in the other. And that's about all you're gonna fit in there. It's a very tight fit in these little shoulder strap pockets. A nice addition overall, I guess, you know. Nice to have something over nothing, I suppose. Uh, this is kind of okay, and this is gonna vary for each person. I found that the arc of this bag, depending how you load your bag, it's almost as if the weight sits too far back on you. The arc is almost a little bit too much. So the weight you have feels like it's shifting and almost pulling you back at some points. Could this be user error in loading the pack? Of course, it's more than likely the case, if I'm being honest. But it was something that I saw happen, not very frequently, but every now and again, like I, I would always feel like I was almost off balance with this pack. It was an issue for me. Will it be an issue for you? I, I don't know. Could be, could not be, I don't know. It did not happen all the time though, which leads me to believe it could have been a weight issue, it could have been where I was storing the heavier parts of my pack. Not entirely sure, so. We will move on to the things that I absolutely dislike about this backpack right now. All right, and now we are at the cons. So, my biggest gripe with this backpack is right here. The hip belt for me simply just did not work very well at all. Uh, you can see it's it's not necessarily badly padded. I don't know what the actual issue was. 
I did notice online other people complaining about this as well. My biggest issue with this hip pelt was that it would constantly slide down my hips and would constantly bead retentioning to the point that I would run out of room on here. It would be so tight. And I could occasionally, when it was that tight, get it to stay, but then these things would dig into me. This imprint would be on my hips at the end of the day because I had to tighten it that much to make it stay up. I never really pushed the pack weight past its, you know, its maximum. I would typically be pushing 20 to 25 pounds, which is right at its suggested carrying weight. So I genuinely don't think it was a weight issue that was causing it. Uh, I had it happen to me as well with lighter weight in the pack. So I just, I don't think it was the weight in particular. I tried, as you can see here, I bought these from another company. There was a little spot in here that you can squeeze stuff in. Uh, definitely not intended design, but I bought these. These are actually shoulder straps from another company. And I slid them in here as extra padding and it helped a little bit, but I was still getting the sliding down of the hip belt. Not as frequently, but it was still there. Um, and that's just really unfortunate. I was wondering myself too, because this is just a single connection. Uh, some of the other companies use a double connection here, so you can tighten the upper part of the belt as well as the lower part separate to get a more snug fit. And I was thinking to myself, it might be you know, useful for that to happen in the future if they want to do it. I mean, <laughs> I don't work for Osprey, so I don't tell them what to do, but I think that that may have alleviated the issue, I cannot be certain, but you know, it. Uh, I've tried packs that have the double adjustment for the hip belt and they stay on me much, much, much better. So maybe something that they could look into, um, that'd be kind of cool. I really genuinely think I would have continued using this bag if the waist belt would have stayed on. Uh, all the other things that I thought were kind of smaller, minute details, or they weren't too big of issues, I feel like that would have fell to the wayside if I could have used the hip belt productively. That is essentially what stopped me from using the pack, um, the hip belt just constantly sliding down. And it's not for lack of trying, I really did try. I mean, I bought external things to try to solve the issue uh, and it just didn't work. So I ended up going a different route and yeah. All right, folks, so there it is. My pros, cons, and okays about the Osprey Exos 58. Overall, I do think it's a pretty good backpack. Um, it just didn't work out for me, unfortunately. Uh, the hip belt issue was definitely a major concern for me and ultimately stopped me from using the bag. In general, the other features are excellent. Uh, the pack is extremely durable, nicely thought out design. Love the top loading, love the compression straps. Pockets are great. The mesh pocket on the outside is awesome as well. I genuinely think if they put a dual tightening system on the hip belt, it would probably solve my issue. I could be wrong, I could be right. Uh, and I wish that they would make the pockets on the sides a little bit bigger. Same with the shoulder strap ones too. I wouldn't mind an extra couple ounces of weight for the added benefit of much easier and better usable pockets. Don't let this deter you from buying this pack, of course. Um, if it works for you, it works for you. I know for a fact that it works for people. I ran into a group of about 10 through hikers on one of my hikes up in the whites this year, and I think eight out of the 10 were using this exact same bag. So if it works for them, it's more than likely gonna work for you as well. Again, I had my issues specifically with the hip belt. If it worked with uh, my hips, I would have kept using this thing, a new problem. Yeah, cool pack, worth it in my opinion, as long as it sits well on your hips. So if it does, that's awesome because it's relatively cheap to easily findable out and about and you can give it a try on, weight it down, walk around the store, see if it sits well for you. If it does, I would recommend it. If it doesn't, I'll look somewhere else. So yeah, until next time, this is Chris, Chris Goes Outdoors. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, feel free to stalk me, check me out on Instagram, Chris Goes Outdoors. And yeah, until next time, hope you enjoyed. If you did, Hit the like button. If you didn't, say what? Drop it in the comments, dude. Keep it real.